This is all part of what we have to go through to make it into the kingdom of heaven. That's why the first thing that came to my spirit to read was that, that narrow path to make it into the kingdom, that difficult path, that straight gate to make it into the kingdom. This stuff must come because there is a bitter part that you must that you must endure to get to the sweet, man. It's sweet at the beginning when you see, oh, it looks, yeah, we're going to get to kingdom. We're going to escape missiles and World War III. And then you realize, wait, we got to go through this stuff. But at the last possible moment is when we're going to get beamed up and get out. The elect will be beamed up at the last possible second and scarcely be saved. You know, so we're going to go through, we're going to make it through a lot of it. But there's a lot that's going to make it through a lot and not make it through that, that the missile at the very end of America being destroyed. But then the men of the Lord will, and those elect will make it at that last second also. And that will be the difference. Um, verse 10 it says and I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up and it was in my mouth sweet as honey this thing is sweet man knowing that you can get salvation from, from uh, thermonuclear missiles and fire you know that, that, that you could uh, go out weekly and, and have the most entertaining job in the world the most fulfilling job in the world to, to, to prophesy the downfall of your captives and, and, and of the land of your captivity you know right in the face and get to see all the, the, the crazy spirits and demons and be able to see all that all that's wonderful but then when that becomes to come upon you when you got to deal with those spirits and those demons you got to deal with that dragon that you may live with you got to deal with society bringing he holy hell upon you demonizing you so on and so forth you know when all these things come upon you you got to deal with that you know, when you, and you, then you got to deal with that. When you deal with it and you make it through, you're built up, man. And you believe more. Your faith is increased. You know, a lot of people don't want to go on the street because they got to deal with people like deal with that. Deal with people that just want to debunk this word. That don't want to that don't want nobody to get salvation, you know, because they ain't got it for themselves or they don't see themselves getting it. They don't want you to get it. They won't let you be 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 you know be strong in your own faith. They want to break your faith also. That comes with this thing. That comes with your 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 family and friends that will offer you every avenue to come back into the world. It may not look like they're offering you the avenue. Hey, just come to the family reunion. Hey, just come to this birthday party. Hey, just come you know hang out this day. Hey, your ex girlfriend back in town. She says she was looking for you. She missed whatever avenue. That this world could find to get you back in, they will. And people that you didn't think, and it never seems like that, that's what they're out there for. But they're out there for that. But you gotta stay steadfast in the belief of this word, man. And that's the bitter part. But guess what? Chew that shit down, swallow it up, and keep pushing, man. Just like the just like the uh the um the bitter herb during the P Passover. I'm at the point, you know, this is just me. I'm at the point when it comes to the bitter herb, I just swallow it. I like it. To me, it, it reminds me of how, how how tasty the lamb is. You know, how good the, the, the unleavened bread is. How good that yayan is, you know. that that's, that's what it reminds me of. So the bitter parts of this life, it reminds me of how good I'm going, you know, it's got it's got to be that I get it. So I'm, I'm happy to swallow it down. That may not be the right mentality. It may not be the right mentality for everybody. But for me... I'm still at this point in this thing, you know, Lord willing, I continue in the faith, you know, that I make it all the way to the end. I endure all the way to the end. But, but whatever works for you, you got to, in, in the spirit of Yahweh, by Shema you got to stick with that man and push it. You know, I look for the bitter parts of this thing. You know, you always, everybody needs a break and you ask for that break when you get it. Because the most high can bring it on you, man. He brings it too. But that bitter man makes you. Let me go to this right quick since I'm kind of touching on it and let the scripture speak better than I can. Ecclesiastes um, uh, Let me see. I'm going to start at verse 2 because there's a few of them right here. Ecclesiastes 7 and 2 it says It is better to go to the house of mourning than the house of feasting. For that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his heart. 
he'll understand that hey, it could it could end for anybody in the swift in the swift moment, you know. Verse three: Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance the heart is made better, which was the point. By that it, going through that bitter, your heart, your mind is made better. You 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 see things on a more realistic level. You're more balanced in your spirit in the way you act, right? And the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning. But the heart of the of fools is in the house of mirth. Always searching out for happy times and mirth, without without with, and trying to make haste and, and skip through those those moments of uh of bitterness. That ain't that ain't gonna lead you nowhere, man. That's gonna lead you right into a situation where you about this truth, man, and out of your opportunity for salvation. You know, that's good enough. Um, back in the uh, wrap this verse up. It says, um, and I ate it up. And it was in my mouth. This is back in Revelation chapter 10. In the middle of verse 10 it says. And I ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it. My belly was bitter. As soon as it digested and really understood what was going on. It makes you, it makes you sick to your stomach man. Wait so I got. I, I could be beheaded. Sitting at a guillotine. My family around me. Gonna turn on me. My kids could be tortured. That's what I gotta deal with. Fuck, man! I don't, I don't know if I can. I don't know if I want to deal with. Hey, this you signed up for this. When you understand, when you you should have read the fine print, man. This is the fine print. The fine print is this is gonna happen to you. You're gonna be tried when you come into this thing. If you haven't been tried to this point, you've been in for a little while. Guess what? You need to check to see if you've been in faith. Ain't got time for no pseudo Israelites, man. A real Israelite in this day and age is gonna go through some shit, man. Pardon my French. They're going to go through some stuff, man. Uh, what else did I want? I don't even... Oh, let me hit address on that bitter right quick. I mean, uh, Ezekiel on that bitter right quick. Um, yeah, Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 2 says, So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat. And fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Then I'm gonna jump down. Um. Yeah, man, because when you read this third chapter, and, and if you want to know about the bitter, I may just read this chapter. Yeah, man, you guys can read it, but I may just make a video on just this chapter, man, on, on, on the sweetness and the bitterness of this. This thing, man. The second and third chapters talks about the bitterness of this thing. So I may just make this as a separate video. Um, Lord, what did I get to it? But read that chapter. I'm going to jump straight to 14. It says, uh, So the Spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness and in the heat of my spirit. But the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. But the hand of the Lord was strong upon me and made me like he made Jonah, like he made other men. Jeremiah, so on and so forth, go out and do this thing that didn't really want to deal with it. But guess what? We had to. We're compelled to. You know? Um, when, when Jeremiah was commanded, I think the brother brought it out at camp. When Jeremiah was commanded to not, you know, who was that? Was that Peter or Paul? They were commanded to not teach in the name of Yahweh, but they couldn't. They had to. As soon as they got out, they went and, and, and spoke in the name, taught in the name. You know? That's how it goes. Um, all right. So let me hit. Um, let me see what that's talking about right quick. <clears throat> that's the one I want to get right now. Yeah. Yeah. Here's right here. Um, all right. Before I get that, I'm going to actually get this back in second address. Uh, 16. Yep, second edge of 16. And I wanted, what was that? 17. Uh, yeah, second edge of 16 and 17. It says, Woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? Well, if you're a righteous man, you how about you, I will deliver you in those days. If, you, if, if you've been counted as a righteous man. You know? It says, uh, the beginning of sorrows and great mornings and the beginning of famine 
and great death, you're going to see a lot of people die around you, man. The men of the Lord are going to see a lot of people die around them. And may even have to put more than a few men to death around you yourself. You know, that comes with it. That's the bitterness that comes with this thing. You know? It says, um, the beginnings of wars, whether it's race wars, whether it's martial law, class wars, World War Three. It says, and the powers shall stand in fear. Uh, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? What shall I do when these evils shall come? You stay in the spirit of Yahweh Bashim and Shah, you humble down, you call upon him. That's what you do. You call upon the spirit of Yahweh Bashim and Shah to guide you through these perils, man. That's what you do. But you got to know that none of us are perfect and we still got to get paid back for the mistakes that we made. It's just some of you going to. Gonna, gonna have to pay the ultimate price with death, and some of you gonna have to pay as being a martyr. Some of us gonna have to pay as being a martyr, and some of us gonna, gonna make it through without being touched. Um, verse uh, 19. Yeah, it says, Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. Things that amendment means things that will correct you or, or, or make you whole again from 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 the broken that you were. That when you make a mistake, well, those scourges for amendment are set up to, to get you back on track. You know, and 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 overall, this whole second death thing of all the missiles and the tribulation, the worst time that has ever come upon our people, that's a major scourge of amendment to get us uh, back to the heavenly Father. A necessary step for, for us to get into greater things. So the two-thirds in the kingdom of heaven, you're going to be all right. After you, like the scriptures say, the same must know it after death by pain. You know, but, but the righteous won't, won't get it. The, the elect won't get it uh, after death by pain. They'll get it before the death by pain. You know, they won't have to deal with death by pain. They'll get it before that. Um, verse 20, but for all these things... They shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. If they go through shit, they just continue. What's the death? My dad always used to push this on me, especially when speaking about my sister at times. Because um, my sister's end up to the ink, ink power, you know, whatever. Um, he said, what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing, respecting di expecting different results. Or even worse, just doing the same thing and don't care what results come out of it. You know, that's most of the two. That's the two thirds of Israel that do that, that do the same thing and either don't care what results come or expecting different results to happen. I'm going to get salvation, but I'm going to go smoke this blunt first. No, I'm going to still eat this catfish because it's okay. No, I'm going to keep putting my money in being lied to by this pastor. No. Um, from there, wanted me to jump to the 15th chapter and the 49th verse. It said, I will send plagues upon you, widowhood, poverty, famine, sword, and pestilence to waste thy houses with destruction and death. Those things are sent upon us, man, to correct us. Those things will come upon even the men of the Lord, not only the two-thirds of Israel. We'll have to deal with those things, but we'll be guided through them. We'll be able to endure those things, but we have to deal with it, and that's part of that bitterness. But we will be able to deal with it. And if you can't feel that 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 it went from when we came in in 07, 08 to um till now, how things have been turned up in the spirit. Sometimes with your family it turns up. Sometimes in society or at work it turns up. You know, sometimes the apostles turn up on us to get us prepared more for things. You know, fasting is all fasting and prayer, man. They're big in this thing. If you're young in the spirit, man, fasting and prayer can get you on a level. It ain't gonna help. It ain't gonna jump you to 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 to, to the top levels just like that, because it don't go like that. But 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 it, but it can get you to the level you need to succeed at where you're at for what you're dealing with. You know, if your motivation is to get, I need to be up by the apostle. If you, that's not. That's not what this thing is about, man. Find where your role is. If you ain't, if you ain't LeBron James or, or whoever else on this team, 
you know, play your role to the best you can, man. Believe me, like like they like the, they said, the Warriors won last night, right? The last guy, the fifteenth guy, the last, the, the 13, 14, and fifteenth guy that that didn't that didn't um didn't even see the the, uh, the 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 game floor to play, they got rings too, man. The trainer got rings. The ball boy got a ring. You know what I'm saying? They all got rings, man, because they all help help this team su to succeed. Same thing in this. Find your role and stick with it, man. Don't don't be having no other motivations to try to get up on a certain level, because that's an easy way to uproot you up out of this thing. And when and when it's the moment for you to step up, the spirit will have you step up and, and be on a certain level. You know, but desiring to be on a level, forget about that. You know. Anyways, it's just something small that came upon my spirit right now anyway um yeah so um yeah i'm gonna wrap it up with this last scripture right here in uh first peter yeah first peter chapter 4 verse uh, 18 matter of fact verse i gotta read up i wasn't going to but i'm gonna read up now yeah verse 12 i'm gonna start up uh all the way down to 18. Yeah, it's a 19. Anyway, it says, um, be, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial. Hear that fire, trial of fire again, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. you yeah, don't think it's something strange when this thing happens, when, when all of this happens unto you. You should know that this was going to happen to you because the scriptures warned you of it. So you should have set your heart aright and constantly endure it. Should, you should be prepared for this. You were warned that this is coming. It says, um, yeah, um, be, but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of your how shy suffering. We're joint heirs unto his life. We have to be joint heirs unto his death also. I believe that's in the book of Romans that breaks that down. Both the bitter and the sweet, right? We want, we want the glory that he got. You know, so we gotta we gotta go through the, the the sufferings that he went through also, right? It says um, that when his glory <laughs> that when his glory be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Yahweh Hamashiach, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of the Most High resteth upon you. And if you be reproached. If you be uh, partakers of suffering, if you be, uh, if you tribulation and anguish come up upon you and you make it through these things, happy are ye. You know, they counted it all joy that they were able to suffer for Yahweh Shai in the book of Acts. You know, it says, um, on their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. But none of you, but let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer. Or as a busybody in other men's matters, okay? Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. And that, that word Christian was a derogatory term unto those that believed unto Yahweh Shai back in the ancient world. When, you know, two, over 2,000 years ago. That was that was a negative term put upon us. Oh, you weren't even believers. Oh, like they say, no, you weren't even, oh, you were Hebrews. Like, yeah, okay. You know, some people still look at us like that. There's more people that's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I know about y'all. Y'all, yeah, y'all cool. Keep it up. We don't need all that, man. You know, that's not what this is about. You know, it says, um, you know, they do that. They don't, they don't mean to glory him deeper inside themselves. That's how you truly glory your how about you outside and word and indeed. That's how you glorify him, man. Pushing out what you, what you do through the spirit of your how about you outside. Whatever you say, whatever you do in your actions, in the spirit of your how about Shimei Shai, that's how that's how you, that's how he's glorified through you. You know. Anyway, it says, um, verse seventeen. It says, "For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of the Most High God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel unto the Most High? What shall be the end of those that don't get it?" Quick precept. Second address. Oh, it opened right up to it. Beautiful. How beautiful in the spirit. Um Second address chapter nine, verse thirteen. And therefore be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished, and when, 
but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whose the world is and for whom the world is created. You know, I, uh, then answered I and said, I have said before and now do speak and will speak it also hereafter that there be many more of them which perish than them that shall be saved. So just because a lot of people ain't into this thing don't mean that you ain't meant to be saved through this thing, man. Don't worry about them. A lot of other people going to fall off, man. That's that broad way that leads you to destruction. But this straight and narrow, that difficult is going to be the way to get to, to salvation, man. And it's only going to be a few of us that glorify the name of Yahweh Hashem Shai in that evil time. And here's the point that I want to bring out here. Verse 18, back in 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, it says, And if the righteous scarcely be saved, that means the righteous will be scarcely saved. We will go through a lot of this bitter, a lot of this tribulation, but we shall scarcely be saved. We're still going to make it through it. Where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? 19, Wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of the Most High commit and keep of their souls to him in well-doing. And how do you do well doing? Stand in the spirit, man. Stand in the spirit. Following what the scriptures showed you as examples of righteousness, what to do. It says, and it, and as unto a faithful creator. Yeah, unto a faithful creator, knowing that he's gonna give you what he promised you, man. He said, if you, if you, if you um how do he say it? If you endure to the end, man, he shall save you from the same. You know? And he'll give you salvation. If you stand stiffly for his name. You know. So Lord willing this was edifying. This was meant as another admonishment to build brothers up. In the spirit of this thing man. That, that this bitter must come upon you. That you have to endure it. The men of the Lord will also endure it. It ain't no free ride up out of here. It, it was sitting on me at, at camp. The brother was going in. You know he touched upon it a little bit. We had a few interruptions or whatever. That, that kind of changed the spirit. But it was still weighing on me to um, to bring it out. So Lord willing brothers edified. Brothers um, are setting their hearts right, man, getting their minds right, that, that we got to deal with this, man. That this man is about to really come down onto the men of the Lord. And all of y'all that click on this stuff, man, if you're on the fence being lukewarm, man, choose a side, you know, sit on the pot and get the fuck off, man, straight up, straight up. You know, with that, I'm going to say, call hello, you high by Shemel Shai, double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone, who rule well, greed, salutations, and blessings unto the house of David, the elect. That shall be saved in these times and guided through all these trouble, troublesome times that's to come. Shalom.